Yo, what's up, you guys? This week I have a single tip to help you get those retro 90s style looking photos, very much like this one right here. So this is a very cool photo. We can always appreciate this kind of stuff. This is something that is very retro and is making its way back. Uh, but usually when we do these, we have a specific way of doing them that makes them a lot better than uh, kind of like a beginner would as far as like direct subject flash goes. So I'm gonna give you that tip. We're gonna talk about what direct subject flash is, and then I'm gonna tell you on how to achieve it better than anybody else you know. So if that interests you, stick around and we'll talk about it. All right, so thanks for sticking around. We're talking about direct subject flash. Now this is completely different than anything else you kind of know about in photography, especially with lighting. This is something that's very niche. It's something that's very uh, specific. It's a definitely not something to use all the time, but it's something that will give you a specific look. It's very editorial. It's used a lot in things like uh, like magazine ads, things like uh, American Apparel has done this. Um, you can see a lot of celebrities have used this kind of like lighting style. Um, if you do like, uh, like brands, other other brands like Supreme has done one like this. You can find a lot of these different photos and all it is is direct subject flash. Um, so usually when we do like flash photography, we're talking about putting it in a soft box. We usually have it at an angle, something that's like kind of maybe like this one I have above me. I know you can't see it, but it's about 45 degrees kind of like over top. So it's like this way, you know, but for direct subject flash would be completely different. When we're talking about direct subject flash, we're talking about literally taking the flash module and flashing it directly at our subject. So when we have direct subject flash, we will literally take the photo just like this. We will have them like sitting there and we will pop that directly at them. And what this tends to give us is the ability to have a subject that is very overexposed or, or mildly overexposed. Hopefully you have it to where they're not like completely blown out, but you have them basically exposed and then your background is going to be super dark and it's almost going to look like a spotlight. It's going to bring it down a whole lot. Um, there's a lot of different things as far as that goes that uh, when you're talking about doing this the best way, you have to think about your, your specific setup and like exposing properly. But beyond all of that, I want to give you a tip on how to do this better than just doing it like most people would. So first of all, let's talk about that, how people do it wrong. Typically, the one thing to think about with your uh, direct subject flash, if you're gonna have it directly attached to the camera, like an on-camera flash, this is only gonna work really in one way, um, and that's basically in landscape mode. So when we have it, uh, the camera horizontal, we have it parallel to the floor. Basically, the idea here is that you have a flash which is centered to your subject. This can work very well because you basically have it where it should be because you want your subject to get that pop, not to the left or the right of them. You want it to be centered on them uh, depending on where they are on the frame. So this is the one, the way that I think is really the best way when you're talking about having on the camera. Because typically what you have with a human subject, people always like to do portrait. So this is the issue that you run in here. When you're taking this photo, what you're gonna end up with is a flash that's off to the left of your subject. So you're gonna catch their left side or you're gonna catch their right side by going the other direction. And you're gonna end up with a flash that is not centered on them. Um, and unless you have multiple subjects and you wanna catch the one to the left or the right, if you're trying to get the center of the frame, you really can't do uh, a vertical shot and keep it like this. The thing to think about here is taking it off of the camera. And that's kind of my secret. So I'm gonna give it up early in this video because it's kind of short. So let's talk about off camera flash and how you can achieve the best idea for this. So this is the secret. You want, wow, that is super bright. Uh, the idea here is that we're taking the flash off of the camera. This is the key for this style that really makes those photos pop. So by taking the flash off of the camera, what you're able to do then is move it however you need to. One thing to think about with direct subject flash that a lot of people don't is the fact that they feel like because it's direct subject flash, it's meant to be harsh for the subject, um, that you can't like contour the light or that you can't have contrast to your photos. Like they all need to be like that spotlight center and then basically like a, a black spot behind them or whatever, like, or a black circle behind them. Uh, but realistically, that's not the case. And if you go and look at any of these like really nice brands that typically do this, what they tend to do is still contour the light and they move that shadow behind them. Um, by doing this, it gives you a different style and it still allows you to get that spotlight where you want it. But the idea 
is that you get uh, that shadow. You can move your shadows behind them and move that, that background a lot with this style. Um, and the basically, the, the piece of gear that you're going to need is one of two things. Um, I have a flash trigger, which allows me to uh, take it. It's basically wirelessly. It's using a, a Wi-Fi or a radio signal, I believe. Um, which allows me to put this wherever I want to as long as it's in range. Uh, they also make cables and stuff where you can do this, and that's very cool, where you would have essentially your flash uh, wherever and then a, a physical cord attached to your camera, right? Uh, but what's super dope about having an off-camera flash is the ability to move that flash. So then I can actually take this photo, take a vertical photo, but then I can put this on a light stand and have it raised or lowered however I need to, or off to the left or off to the right, uh, but still centered, right? Because a lot of the times you'll end up with something like this, where you have a left frame or a right frame that is, uh, which is like exposed for versus the center of our, our subject or our center of our photo where our subject is. Uh, unlike this one, which is perfectly done because we have that flash centered on our, our, our subject. So it's a huge difference and something to think about. Try something like this versus trying to do it on the camera. And as a sidebar to this, something to think about is that you don't necessarily have to have your flash and wireless trigger completely separated, like in huge differences to make this work. One thing that you can buy is actually a, uh, uh, basically like an L bracket that would attach to the bottom of like a quarter 20, go up and to the left or up and to the right, whatever you want to do, and then you can mount this this way, giving you that same ability to keep it on camera and keep you mobile if you want to. So that's a big thing to do about like on camera. So technically it's still kind of like off camera, on camera. It's like a hybrid really. Like it's physically attached to the camera, but it's not on the hot shoe. So that's something to think about. There's an L bracket that you can use. They're very popular. That's a way to still be able to move around. But if you want to, I still like the idea of having that flash on a light stand and then moving the light stand whatever if you have like a nice spot where you're able to do this it's pretty awesome and I think you should try it out I think this is something that's kind of niche but it's super fun especially since it's kind of like that 90s retro aesthetic I think you'll like doing this um, if you never have before or if you used to and don't anymore it'll give you a reason to go back and try it maybe a little differently than you used to so if you want to see the rest of the photos that I made from this set make sure to follow me on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter they're all three there um, down below in the description make sure to leave me a content a comment as well on your content if you post your photos anywhere else like if you post yours to Instagram make sure you at me um, here on YouTube or on Twitter or wherever else. Let me know that you did. That way I can see your work. And also, if you want to, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you're the first to get the new stuff. Um, I typically do stuff every week, so I like to give you little hints and tips and tricks or we talk about the news or whatever every week. Um, just different things. So if you want more content, make sure to do all of those things. I super appreciate it. Go out and try this. Let me know how they go. And let me grab my lens cap because that's going to be the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.